A good hero needs two things. An awesome array of villains, bad guys who threaten everything, whether it's the universe, the city block, or their school. These bad guys make our heroes heroes because they need somebody to stand up against them, to fight for what's right, defend the defendless, and really step up to the plate when all hope is lost. But just as important are those civilian characters, those people that our hero thinks about when they're facing off against these seemingly unstoppable threats, those characters that, oh man, if I don't stop this guy, then my wheat cake provider is not going to be around anymore. Shoot, who's going to keep the mansion safe from dust and debris if I don't make this move? Or who's going to go with me to the bar to celebrate a big legal win if I don't stop this bad guy? Or who's going to give me a little motivation when I'm fighting against the demon horde in New York City? Civilian characters are major and so important to any great collection. That's why I feel like Hasbro and Marvel Legends needs to come up with a way to inject a lot more civilians into the line. And I think I finally figured out a good way to make that a reality. What's up, everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles welcoming you to another edition of Lyles Figure Files. Now, I've been thinking about this for a while. As you read different comics, you know there's some major players that should be represented in figure form. Where it's like, yeah, I mean, they're they're not as cool. They have no flashy costumes. But when you kind of think about the hero, those characters are just as important in a lot of cases as their arch enemy. I mean, can you think of Spider-Man without Gwen Stacy falling off the bridge? Spider-Man making that dramatic rescue that isn't? Or can you think about Hulk not even existing if it weren't for that punk kid that happens to go out on the test site? Like, there's so many important keys to these characters and how they're linked to our heroes. I feel like my Marvel Legends shelf needs a little bit more representation from those civilian characters. Now, we've gotten a few over the years, but it's really not that much. I mean... We've got a really solid Gwen Stacy slash Mary Jane Watson. We've got Joni, Joni, Jolly, J. Jonah, Jameson. And we've got the chameleon here, and I threw him on here just to kind of give you a sense of there is some possibilities for other civilian type characters because we've got a suit base. We've got that happy Hogan from the MCU. So we've gotten a few. I would say we probably... All told, got 10. And I'm really trying to separate the MCU characters because they do tend to get a bit more love on that front than our comic book characters who are desperately in need of some attention and some love on that front. And I looked back through and I figured the best way to make this a reality are from five packs, where we stick to the traditional model that we've seen Hasbro do over the years, and especially with the villain packs, ways to get more villains out there, which is very necessary, very key. But let's take a look at this one, the Spider-Man multi-pack. This one is a really good example. We've got our hero, of course, Spider-Man and four villains. I'm going to try to work around doing that, but you can got to get a sense of what they're trying. I mean, they're doing characters that really would never get done in figure form in another way. We've got the human fly. We've got Razorback, Molten Man, Silver Mane, and they're all packed in here together with a Spider-Man you may or may not want or care about. But with that Spider-Man inclusion, we get four really random villains. That maybe not everybody knows about. Then we've got this one, which is even more encouraging because we've got five villains. We've got Stripe. We've got Vertigo. We've got Random. We got zero and we got pretty boy. No hero needed. That is ideal because this is a pack. Hey, bad guys, great. And we've got all villains. No need to throw in Wolverine just because. But here's another five pack. This one does feature Wolverine and it's got Callisto. It's got eh, Jason Wingard, sort of, kind of. I don't know what the deal is with the colors. So I still haven't bought this pack. And it's also got Cyber, and it's got this really awesome Omega Red figure. 
that seems to me to be the best way to get civilians out there. Now, clearly, if we're going to do this, we got to have some flashy character thrown into the pack where it's like, okay, yeah, here you go. Here's your bone. Now, in a lot of cases, I was able to work around trying to take a, a little bit, t- follow the lead, if you will, of the X-Men villains pack where I don't feel the need to inject or throw in a hero for every one of these box sets. I'm kind of using that as a guide. Like, all right, I've got to have some sort of costume in this pack. And that way I can sell the rest of those really important characters. So let's see how we did. I, I didn't do every possible combination. I wanted you guys to have a little bit of fun too. So I did four and feel free to come up, follow the pattern, if you will, and see if you can come up with some five packs of your own. Now, I, I have a lot of ways to start off with this, but I felt like if you're going to go with civilian characters or a line where supporting characters are really essential and really necessary, you cannot go any further without starting with the founding family of the Marvel Universe, the Fantastic Four. Now you can see here lots of superheroes, absolutely just one, two civilian characters in this mix, but they really, really have some key supporting characters. And I kind of played along with this pattern too. Also finding ways to come up with some bad guys who don't have really cool costumes. Maybe just regular looking guys. But that this way, I can throw them in this pack too as another means of injecting civilians into my Marvel Legends line. So we're going to start off here, the Fantastic Four. And we've got Alicia Masters. You can't do this without having Alicia. She's tied in so closely, so tight with the Fantastic Four. And I try to come up with a way to limit accessories because of, yeah, this might be a bit risky. But with Alicia, I figured, why don't we throw in Elijah head sculpt so that way Johnny and Ben can compete for her affections. And then next, if we're going to have Alicia, we may as well have her daddy, the puppet master. He's another villain that I'm throwing in here. He would look pretty regular, but he's one that I really think would be so fun to have in this line, especially if we get this head kind of exaggerated like this. That would be great. Maybe toss in two puppets. Just some basic sculpts of like the thing, Human Torch, Reed Richards, whatever. But I think he would be really fun. So there's another use for some accessories in this budget. Wyatt Wingfoot, you cannot do anything with the Fantastic Four without including Wyatt in terms of civilian characters. We've already got an awesome She-Hulk. And I think this would be a really great time to introduce Wyatt. We don't have a lot of indigenous characters in the Marvel Universe. We've got our Warpath. Got our Thunderbird, got Wyatt in here, and Wyatt is not a superhero, at least as far as I'm concerned. He's just a regular adventurer hanging out with the Fantastic Four, and I think he would be really good to throw in this pack. Then we've got non-sexy Agatha Harkness, and I think we can throw in her cat. Agatha is, of course, getting all kinds of MCU attention, so I think she could help draw more people to this set and just do her basic old school like this. My last one, this is the character I think could help sell it. It's not Dr. Doom. It's Christoph Bernard. And this is, depending on your continuity, you want to follow and pay attention to the son of Dr. Doom slash half-brother of Reed Richards. And I think we can get him in this look, of course, with the removable mask so we can show Christoph's face. That would be awesome. And for the most part, you could basically use a Dr. Doom body, maybe a smaller buck, shorter buck if you want. I think this is a really fun Fantastic Four set, one of which that could, should work as a viable five pack. Civilians are really important, really, really matter to the FF. Alicia, of course, is super key. Agatha, it's a character. It's got a lot of buzz now, not just with comic book fans, but with mainstream media thanks to her appearance in WandaVision and, of course, this Disney Plus show that I'm not that excited about. Wyatt could be a little bit bigger, hanging out with Johnny Storm. I just love the possibilities. Finally getting a civilian like Wyatt into the line. You can hang with, with the Fantastic Four. You can hang out with She-Hulk. So there you go. That That's my first suggestion, my first 
civilian five pack. And you know, I cannot get any further with civilian packs without the guy who has so many major civilian characters, so important, so integral to everything about him. Of course, you know, I'm talking about Spider Man, and here are so many. I mean, you could just choose any combination of five characters. I'm looking at this again. I'm like, oh, maybe I should have put this character in here. What about this one? There's so many. I really think that Hasbro could get away with doing multiple Spider-Man civilian packs, including more Peter Parker, especially this oh-so-cool 70s tiger cheetah print. Whatever he's got rocking with this shirt, I want this in figure form. But yeah, I mean, a Spider-Man civilian pack seems like a no-brainer. So let's go to my choices, my options for this one. Let me uh, do this so I can make sure to get the full cool animation for you. But here you go. This is that set. And clearly, you cannot do this without Aunt May. And I know, yeah, we've got an Aunt May from the cartoon, but I want this version classic, old school Aunt May with the hair tied back in a slight ponytail. Not anything cool or modern about her. That vintage classic version of Aunt May. Robbie Robertson, gotta have him. I will find a cigar pipe for him because he needs that. Flash Thompson, bully slash cool friend of Peter Parker. And then my concession to trying to come up with something, some tie-in, some link to mainstream properties get ezekiel we get madam webb madam webb is not a character i think that could sell on her own in a deluxe set or whatever but i do think in this kind of civilian set this could work ezekiel again not a really flashy looking character but he's a mentor slash villain to spider-man and make sure we include him barefoot so i think that would be really fun so we got a villain slash mentor and then we've got a mysterious character in madam webb and if you're worried like well how's that gonna work because she does need her chair i just think back to this five pack of the super villains and zero comes with the portal yeah it was already created for dr strange but if we can fit in a big character like strife and pretty boy needing all new sculpting and random I think we can figure out a way to include Madam Webb's chair. So I think that could work really easily for that set. So that's my Spider-Man set. And I really hope that we can get some of those characters. Of course, Aunt May probably tops my list in terms of civilian characters that I want to see sooner rather than later in Marvel Legends. Next up, I'm going to throw a little curveball. Not Captain America, not Iron Man, not Thor. I'm going with another founding Avenger. This time it is with Hulk. And I'm also got a little bit of tease. No Pantheon members included on this list. But I think there's a real strong option for their own separate box set. If we're looking for viable Hulk characters to throw into the line. And we still need a ton of Hulk characters. So why not do them? So here you go. And I feel like none of these should be a surprise. I mean, these are characters. We're overdue, I would say, in Marvel Legends. General Thunderbolt Ross. I mean, this dude is so key. I mean, he is like Hulk's major villain. And, you know, we've got a Red Hulk, but that doesn't count. And we've got a Red She-Hulk, but that also doesn't count. I want a civilian Betty Ross. we got Major Glenn Talbot. So let's make that happen. The three key characters. I don't know where my guy is disappearing off to. I don't know why he's not showing up in this picture anymore. But Rick Jones, Rick Jones was here. Let's see why. There you go. I don't know why Rick was disappearing. But Rick, I mean, he's absolutely the reason Hulk is the Hulk. Rick is important not just to the Hulk, but also to the Avengers. He hangs out with Captain America. He also hangs out with Captain Marvel. So Rick, the disappearing character in this slideshow, is really key, really necessary. Doc Samson, I was torn about which costume to go with. When I started reading Doc Samson and Hulk, he was rocking this cool red leather getup with a ponytail. 
But I mean, I am a fan of this look too. The hair just long flowing like he's a super superhero. And this picture is kind of fun because we got Glenn, we got Betty, we got Doc Samson, and we got General Ross. And of course, Rick just doesn't want to stay here for whatever reason. Fancy editing guy. But there you go. So that is my Hulk setup. And I think that one, all those characters make a lot of sense. Thunderbolt Ross is an un- overdue villain slash supporting character. So I really would love to see him. Hopefully as soon as next year, I'm sure we're going to get an MCU Red Hulk. But if we can manage to sneak in Thunderbolt Ross somehow, maybe in a five pack, I would really be ecstatic about that. Finally, this is quick. This was a fast video. Got to get some love to those mutants, the X-Men. And they're another group where you could do multiple five packs of all the important, all the key civilian characters in their ranks. And I think I got a little cute with this one, but let me see. Let me know what you guys think on this one. So for my X-Men, I went this route. I went with Madeline Pryor. And with X-Men 97, she's got a lot more love and attention. And I want Goblin Queen for this one. I want the straight up civilian, maybe in her flight suit. That way she can hang out with Scott. She can hang out with Alex. She can hang out with the rest of the Outback X-Men. Because when I think of that team, she's a really key part to it, especially in the build up to Inferno. So she's really necessary for me. And just a really key character in X-Men mythos. Also, Val Cooper, another important character. She can just hang out with any well, do we trust these mutant characters? Senator Kelly, another one I thought of including in this, but also for her role as the administrative leader of X-Factor. We got that team complete now, but now it's time to get greedy and go, all right, let's get Val. So I think she's a viable character as well, thanks to X-Men 97. So we got two of those. I mentioned this guy in my last top 50, Cameron Hodge, and I want to get him in a suit first. And of course, I want to get him in his right attire. I would love to see a two-pack of Hodge in the full-on right gear and then one of those smiley soldiers. Maybe that's not the best army builder setup, but I would love to see that happen. We've got Moira McTaggart in the line already and a really cool two-in-one get-up. But I really want to see her in this yellow and red bodysuit gear. She wore that a lot of the time in X-Men comic books before House of X, etc. And I'd love to see this because this is, to me, her classic non, I'm going out for the town with Sean. I'm going out on the town with Charles. I like this look. This is her lab get up for most of the time. She's not rocking a short skirt like the Marvel Legends figure. So I'd really love to see this. And finally, my cheap way to get Peter Rasputin in his non-armored gear, put him in this five pack. Cause I feel like most X-Men fans would be on board with getting paying whatever, what is it? 120 to start and then 25. If you can find it at Ross to get Co- Colossus, not Cyclops in a box set. Here you go. This is a really easy way to include him. We've seen bigger characters in these sets, so he doesn't have to have too much sculpting. I feel like for the most part, Using that Thor base for Colossus would work pretty well. So that's an easy one. So those are my five packs with civilians. Got a little love for the X-Men again. I could probably do two or three of them with civilians. One kind of villain, one kind of costume character. Cecile Reyes might work for a character in one of these box sets in her X-Men suit get up. So there's, I mean, and then of course the Utopia X-Men, you could put a bunch of them in there as well. Uh, more Fantastic Four characters could work. Of course, you could come up with three box sets for Spider-Man characters. You could throw the Enforcers, Mr. Big, and then uh, maybe Ned Leeds in there. Harry Osborn, who I neglected to include in this set. Well, there's only so many spaces. But you see how Hasbro could potentially do this. I would love to hear what you guys would come up with using this formula of a quasi-costume character thrown in the mix with four civilians, but also trying to figure out a way to include a hero costume character that might not work on their own. Let me know what you guys think. Which five packs would you come up with? 
Which ones of mine did you like? Let me know as always in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. This episode of Lyle's Figure Files has been filed. Mm -hmm.